strike its rod. And this one's called Being Like a Jesus Puppet. Well, this is what a Jesus puppet might look like. <laughs> this is what a Satan puppet might look like. So I'll try to explain some things about uh, what the Bible teaches about being like a Jesus puppet. Well, I'll read some scriptures first. John 15 verses 19 to 20 says, Jesus said, I can do nothing by myself. I only do what my Father shows me to do. So it's like Jesus is saying that uh, i got to wait for my Father to show me what to do, and I don't do what I want to do or by myself. So it's sort of like a puppeteer and a puppet, or an actor and a director or something. John 8, verse 28 says, Jesus said, I only speak the things that my Father teaches me to speak. So it's like he's waiting for his Father's voice to tell him what to do, and then he starts to do it. Sort of like an actor, maybe like a puppet. The puppet waits for the words you speak to be able to function. The puppet's under total control. Say so you had a, a, a Satan puppet, it'd be under your control to move around the way you wanted it to move. It's like God controls Satan. He's, he's, Satan's like God's puppet. Jesus was like Father God's puppet. We're supposed to be like Father God and Jesus' puppet today. Jesus said about the religious leaders of his day, Your father is Satan. And you want to do his will. He's a liar and a murderer. John 8 verse 44. Paul said in 2 Timothy 2 verse 26. The devil has taken them captive. To do his will with his lies. So, if you want to give Satan a stronghold in your life, he's going to take you captive. He's going to make you act like his puppet or something. So, if you don't let... If you're not a puppet for Jesus, you're a puppet for Satan. Jesus said in... John 15, verse 5, I am the vine, and you are my branches. Without me, you can do nothing successfully. If you live in me and I live in you, then you will bear much good fruit for me. It's like we have to have Jesus inside of it, just like this puppet needs to have me inside of it to control it or work it. And Galatians 2.20, Paul said, It's no longer I that live in me. It is now Christ who lives in and through me instead. So, we see these analogies in the Bible of having a different power than ours take us over. Like I said, if you don't let Jesus control you, you'll have Satan controlling you. If you're not a puppet for Jesus, you'll be a puppet for Satan. You only got two choices. So, I'll try to explain a bit about being like a Jesus puppet. So, like Jesus said, without him we can do nothing successfully. He is like the vine and we're like a branch. If we live in him and he lives inside of us, then we'll be like Paul saying, it's not me living in me, it's Jesus living in me. So it's like we got to let Jesus use our body, sort of like a puppet. We got to wait for him to tell us what to do, and we got to wait for him to give us the strength to do it or the wisdom to do it. It's sort of like an actor waiting for the director to direct how you're supposed to do something in a movie or a, being dependent on a writer to give you the words to speak. 
like Jesus said, without him we can do nothing successfully. It's like Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who does it through me. So we have to learn to be like a puppet. It's like, put your hand in me, Jesus, or put your life in me, Jesus, or put your spirit in me. I give my body over for you to use or something. And then his thoughts become our thoughts, the mind of Christ, and then our body becomes his body to love God or love others or pray or study God's word of truth or try to teach God's word of truth. It's like I wouldn't have a desire to make truth teaching videos unless Jesus was inside of me wanting to do it. Before I was saved, I would have nothing to do with Christianity. <laughs> One time, I went to a Jesus festival in my city, and I was not a Christian. I just went there to try to party or something <laughs> with the young Christian girls. And one Christian girl said to me in my drunken, drugged-up state or whatever, you need to get saved. I said, no, I don't. I'm having too much fun with the alcohol and the drugs and the immoral sex or whatever. Years later, I felt like a prodigal son in a pig pen. <laughs> and I said, I need help. Help me, Jesus. If you'll cure me of this disease, I'll serve you. So whatever disease I had went away. and. After that, I started learning about God is real and I should get saved by him and started obeying his will. Then you have to learn how to let Jesus do it through you. It's like learning to prophesy or something. I went to a school where they train you in spiritual gifts. And you're trying to learn to prophesy, so you're waiting for God to give you words to speak, and then you speak them out as he gives you words. You can do this through just speaking it out in a group of people for the building up of the body, or you could write it down and share it with people later. This is what God's trying to say to us. It's like when you think of Paul writing letters in prison or something. Paul's saying, it's not I that live in me, it's Jesus who lives in me. So it's, we can almost look at the Bible at the New Testament and say, Jesus wrote that. Jesus wrote that through Paul. Or you might be able to see in these videos, Jesus taught some truth through Rod or something. Paul tried to let Jesus use him like a puppet. I tried to let Jesus use me as a puppet. But as I said, we got two choices. If we don't let Jesus use us as a puppet, we let Satan use us as a puppet. So most of the population are like Satan puppets. A few people are trying to be like Jesus puppets. And that's the way it has to be. It's like John the Baptist was like a puppet. It's like uh, Father God said, John the Baptist, I want you to go out in the wilderness and eat locusts and prophesy what I tell you to prophesy to people. And John the Baptist chose to do it, or Abraham. Didn't do his will, he did what God was telling him to do. And Paul just tried to do what the Spirit was telling them to do, or what Jesus was trying to do through them. Jesus wants to use our bodies to glorify himself with. If we'll let him. It's like, he's not going to force us. It's like, Jesus comes to the rock, can I use your body today to do some good works? Yes, Jesus. That's the, that's the kind of attitude we have to have. I don't want to live in me. I don't want the flesh living in me. I don't want the demons living in me. <laughs> Satan living in me. I want Jesus living in me. And then it works. Jesus tells you what to do, gives you the wisdom and power to do it, the desire to do it, the ability to do it. God's trying to prepare us now for greater things in the future that we'll have to do for him. He's got to toughen us up now, get our faith strong in him now, so that when trouble, tribulation hits or whatever, judgment on the wicked, we'll have a, this kind of faith that doesn't fail in it. We'll be able to preach his word because we learn to do it now. Or We'll be able to do miracles when people need it because we learn to trust in them now to do miraculous things for us. And we don't need to see a miracle until we need a miracle. And so far, in this kind of prosperous society, people don't need too many miracles. Unless it's like a terminal illness that they get healed over something.
But in the future, if it's hard to find food, or you need supernatural protection and stuff like that, we'll have to trust in that. Jesus living in me can part the Red Sea. Jesus living in me can raise the dead. It's not too difficult for Jesus in me to do. So, Jesus has taught me a lot about depending on him. It hasn't been easy. It's like uh, the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. Well, we're supposed to follow his example. Uh, he's got to put me through fiery trials like Job or something to learn to trust in him, not me, which is good for me. The whole Bible is full of people suffering in circumstances beyond their control, but God helping them through it. So when the tribulation hits in the future, it'll be interesting to see God's miraculous power enabling us to function in that situation and not apostatize in that situation. We got to go through suffering now, sort of like a Job experience or a Satan sifting us like we'd experience and build our faith in God through those circumstances so that when we're dealing with a lot more trouble in the future, we'll have learned how to operate in that uh, faith that's able to stand. Because Satan will tempt people when real trouble hits in the future. Where, why isn't your God making you healthy and wealthy now? And um, they won't be able to stand. They had the wrong Jesus. You have to have the real Jesus to really stand in the real trouble to come. Not the one that's like a genie or something that says he wants everybody healthy and wealthy or something. It's not going to work in the economic collapse to come. It doesn't work now. They say that they, God wants to heal everybody, but they're wearing pop bottle glasses or something. And they don't heal the people in the wheelchairs, actually. But that's part of the false Jesus movement or something. The faith movement or something. Anyways. We want the real Jesus. We want to get toughened up in suffering trials now. So we'll be able to handle the suffering trials to come. Let Jesus do it through us. There's nothing too difficult for Jesus to do. It's like when trouble has great tribulation... Jesus can handle it. It's like, uh, if I die, he can raise me from the dead. There's nothing too difficult for Jesus inside of me to do. He wants my enemies to drop dead at my feet. He will do it. That's the attitude we have to have. That's what the Bible teaches. So the Bible teaches that uh, we're supposed to let God control us. Sort of like a puppet. Let him give us the thoughts to think and the words to speak and the strength and miraculous power to do his will. It's like Jesus said, I, I'm not doing these miracles. The Father's doing them through me. And that's what we have to say. I'm not preaching this gospel correctly or doing miracles. It's Jesus doing it through me. All the glory has to go to Jesus. It's like Jesus said to me the other day, thank you, Rod, for allowing me to live through your body to do good works that glorify me or something like that. When we have a close, intimate relationship with Jesus, it's like we're one. His thoughts become our thoughts, and our thoughts become his thoughts. And, and any kind of satanic wrong thoughts, we say, ah, oh, that's an invasion or something. Put up the border towards that. Keep the enemy out with truth. Satan tries to sneak in with lies to take us captive. We have to put up like a shield of truth against them to keep them out. And if there, he gets us to sin, we've got to repent of it quickly and shut that door again. So he doesn't start controlling us. Like Paul said, Satan has taken him captive with his lies to do his will. Satan's a liar and a murderer. He has to lie to you to get you to think sin's okay. And you got to say, no, I don't believe that. That's a lie. Obedience is the best choice for me. <laughs> Being close to Jesus is the best choice for me. So that's what Jesus wants us to do. Let him control us, sort of like a puppet. Let him give us the thoughts to think and the words to speak and let him use our body to do what he wants to do through us, to try to love God, love others, pray, learn truth. It's like looking at Jesus when he lived on the earth. Jesus loved the word of God. Jesus learned the Word of God. Jesus preached the Word of God. Jesus tried to live the Word of God. If you want to be successful with Jesus, you've got to 
love the Word of God and learn the Word of God and try to teach the Word of God. You're never going to be successful any other way. That, if Jesus is in you, you want to read the Bible, you want to understand it, He can teach it to you, whether on audio or reading it yourself. It's one of the most important things for successful Christian living. And then you can discern whether it's Jesus' voice speaking to you or the devil's voice speaking to you because Jesus' voice goes according to the Word and Satan's voice goes against the Word. If you don't read the Bible and learn what the truth is in there, you won't know how to discern the voices in your mind. So you can pick Jesus' voice to listen to or Father God's voice to listen to and do His will for your life. Let Him do it through you. Sort of like a puppet for Jesus instead of a puppet for Satan anymore. It's like when people get saved, they're saying, I want to stop being a puppet for Satan. I want to start being a puppet for Jesus. And that's the way it is. So we need to understand that. Like Jesus said, I don't do anything. The Father's doing it through me. Like Paul said, I don't do anything. Jesus is doing it through me. So let's give Jesus our lives. Let's give Jesus our bodies. Find out what he wants us to do through prayer. Start doing it. Trusting in him to give us wisdom and power to do it, even though it's difficult. Whenever we try to obey God, Satan tries to stop us. But if Jesus is saying to keep doing it, we keep doing it. Even if we're weak and tired, and we've got to step out of the boat and walk in the power of God, like walking on the water like Peter. If you're weak and tired and God's telling you something to do, just say, yes, Jesus, I'll do it, and then the power will start to come in you and you'll be able to do it. That's the way Jesus works with me. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, he can give you the power to do it. So try to be like a puppet for Jesus. Let him be the vine, you be the branch. Let him put your sinful flesh nature to death in you. Don't let the devil live in you. And let Jesus live in you instead. And you'll find successful living. Being like a Jesus puppet. So that's a bit about being like a Jesus puppet.